Hi guys, Tracy here. I'm going to scrapbook this picture from my recent vacation. Uh, it's really nice to be back home and seeing my kids and being able to scrapbook and stuff. So uh, I wanted to uh, jump right in and use this photo. I'm just looking through the Scraptastic kit for July. I have the Rock Lobster kit. I also have the add-on from the other kit which was called Out on the Town. Uh, right now you just see me looking through the Rock Lobster kit. I have the kit and the add-on and I'm just picking out some of the papers that uh, I think are gonna look good with this. It's gonna be a masculine photo because it's a picture of my husband. Um, and I really love the colors in this kit. Those bright greens and blues and reds, they're just so pretty. And he's carrying a really vivid red jacket. Here's the add-on from the other kit. So these, this kit has more pinks than reds. Um, and I just have the add-on for, for the carry-on, or for, not the carry-on, the out on the town. Um, and that arrow paper really kind of speaks to me here. So I pulled that out of the, and that's the only thing I'm going to use from the uh, other kit. So most of this is from the Rock Lobster kit. This is Heidi Swap paper and it is gorgeous. I had no idea. I hadn't uh, seen the Serendipity collection before and I had no idea how nice it was. It's like a really pretty um, circular pattern, green on green. So I'm just cutting two layers of the other papers. That wood plank paper is from Simple Stories and the arrow paper is from Fancy Pants from What a Wonderful Day collection. And now this is more of that Simple Stories I Heart Summer paper and I hand cut the chevron and then I decided to take off the cream part. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I really, really want to use the chevron, but I also really want to use those two layers of paper and the two layers of paper are not working with the chevron at all. Um, so I decide to cut another chevron, a small pink one, even though it is a masculine layout, I'm going with pink anyways, um, but it's kind of a reddish orangey pink. It's, I guess you could call it salmon. We'll call it salmon since it's a layout about my husband. Um, and now I've decided to cut apart these other chevrons. I'm going to put a tiny bit of space in between them on my layout. <clears throat> Eventually, for right now I don't have that space there. Um, I've decided to outline all of these pieces and that's going to take me a little bit. When you're outlining it's important that you, you know, in order to get the straightest line you want to um, use, keep your wrist straight and um, move your arm. I'm not always doing that here. I'm getting a little lazy and sometimes I'm, I'm curving my wrist when I, when I outline. But you'll notice that most of the time I'm moving my entire arm and keeping my wrist straight. That's just a little tip for straight lines. I like to use my zig marker, my plain black zig marker. Um, I think it's called a zig writer. <clears throat> and so now I decide to ditch those layers and that works a little bit better. I'm just going to use the photo for now. I am going to bring back one of those layers. Um, but for now, I'm just going to, I'm using temporary adhesive to adhere those chevrons and I'm using the grid on my, on my work surface to make sure that I'm lining it up properly. <clears throat> Sorry, I seem to be losing my voice here. So I want to float the um, salmon colored one up a little bit. And now I'm going to have a great deal of difficulty with my sewing machine here. I you're going to see some of it and then I'm going to edit out some of it because it's very long. Um, it took me a really long time to realize that it's not threaded properly. I can see very clearly from this angle that it's not threaded the whole time it's not threaded right. And I'm thinking what's wrong? What's going on? I keep every time I sew like two stitches and then it gets um, it gets caught up and so I go back and forth and back and forth. I decide to try in a new position and it's just not working at all. So I think I'm going to cut it out pretty soon. Um, and I'll come back when the thread is working properly. There you go. Now it's, I can tell that it's threaded properly. It has to go around that purple part at the top and it wasn't um, around it. 
So now I'm just uh, sewing. I'm showing you my sewing there. Um, and hang on a second. I'm going to show you a close up. Yes, I'm going to show you a close up in just a few seconds here. Um, so you just see me stitching the zigzags. And I decided to change my camera angle here so I could show you how I'm stitching the zigzag. So basically, I sew a straight line and then I stop when the needle is in the paper. So I, I'm going forward with my hand there just to get it in the right spot. Then I lift up the foot and turn it 90 degrees and sew again. So again, I'm like the needles in the paper, lift the foot, put down the foot, and then sew again. So you'll get to see, to see me do this a couple of times. And this is just my last stitch that I wanted to just kind of show you how, how I do this. So there you go. I think I'm going to show you a close-up of how that looks. Oh, there's a stitch missing there, but you get the point. Um, haha, you get the point. <laughs> so that's how you make cr crisp edges and, and corners on your sewing. <laughs> So now I am trying to um, curve up the edges of this paper and it was really hard to do it with my hands. It was taking a long time so I decided to grab my We Are Memory Keepers Brad Setter and it has a curve shaped tool that you use to spread apart the tongs of your of your brad on the back side but it's the perfect shape for pulling up the edges of sewn down paper or so I discovered today. <laughs> um, and what this does is it, it actually, um, it kind of breaks up and, and softens the fibers of the paper and makes them a lot more pliable so that you can, you know, turn them up easier. Because this paper is pretty stiff. It's, it's fairly the uh, Simple Stories cardstock. It, the, like the paper that their pattern paper is on is pretty close to cardstock. Like it's, it's a pretty heavy duty paper. So you really have to actually work at it to uh, distress it like this. So I'm just going through. I hope I remember to zoom out here. Just uh, adding some finishing touches with my hands wanted you to see that close up. So I just slowed her down for a few minutes here. And now I'm going to go back to trying to figure out how I'm going to compose this. I thought about using some matte paper there for a um, background, but I decided not to. So I'm just matting the paper with that darker green um, Simple Stories paper. That's the wood plank. You can't really tell it's a wood plank anymore, but uh, I think it, it defines the photo a little bit. And that's a bit of interest. I took my distress tool. I don't know if I did that yet, um, but I did take my distress tool to the edges of that mat just to make it a little less neat looking because the um, sewn parts are so um, jaggedy that I wanted it to kind of not contrast too much with that. Those are those three Amy Tangerine clothespins that came in the kit. I also have some of those uh, crepe paper stickers that came in the kit, trying to decide what I'm going to do with them. Um, I'm going to use my roller date stamp to put the date on that one, and I just double stamped it. And I'm going to use my um, Lumo Color by Stettler uh, pen, which is my slick surface pen. You can also use a slick writer, and the Project Life kit this month did come with a black slick writer, uh, which is great for writing on stickers and outlining shiny stickers um, that other markers would tend to ble bleed and, and smudge on your slick surface of the sticker. So now the layout is starting to come together and I'm going to place my title. I'm just picking out these, these are awesome thickers. They're my very favorite thicker right now. It's called Sketchbook. I think it's called Sketchbook. Yes, it is. Um, and they're in this really, really pretty blue and they've got like a white doodling on them. And so I put out my Central Park and then I was going to put the whole title. I love those thickers so much I wanted to do the whole title in them, but it was a little bit of overkill. So I uh, went with the red Jenny Bolin letter stickers for the first part of the title. But first I'm going to um, think about I want to put some uh, label stickers up there underneath the top part of the uh, title 
just um, to give it a home to live in. Like it just, it, I, the pattern that they were going to be on with those arrows, I love that pattern, but it's a little bit too strong of a pattern to put these thickers on. Or, sorry, I mean these stickers. Um, and those are Jenny Bolin um, letter stickers that came in the kit. And then these are crepe paper letter stickers. They're beautiful. They're like a marble. They look almost like a marble tile with a gold font on them. And it's a scroll, like a cursive font. It's really, really pretty. There you see it up close. And so now that I know that my title is going to work by laying it out on the wax paper, I'm now um, committing to the placement and putting them down. And uh, I'm first I'm going to outline these stickers using again my Lumo Color. And you could use the Slick Writer that came in your Project Life kit from Scraptastic this month if you um, if you got the kit. Um, but you know those slick writers are good to have in in your um, arsenal of markers because they write on so many surfaces that would smear otherwise. So this layout is pretty much coming together right now. Um, I'm going to use one of those brads uh, from Simple Stories. The whole set of brads came in the kit and so one of them had this really cool sunshine with clouds and the, and the sun is a yellow brad. It's really really cool. Um, so I wanted to use that and it says um, here comes the sun and it was relevant to the journaling because in the journaling I plan to talk about um, how the, uh, the sun was kind of like in and out that day. It was raining and then it was sunny and then it was rainy and then it's sunny. So I put some other brads around on the layout. I'm going to put this geotag on there just because I love it. I love geotag so much and it's the right color. It's the same color as the salmon colored chevron that's up above. So that kind of ties that in. I put a brad in the middle from that same set of brads and I'm just going to outline it again with my slick surface marker. I'm going to because this uh, those paper these those I'm um, sorry those clothespins take up so much space and and um, cause the paper to lift off the surface. I'm going to put the whole thing on fairly thick pop dots. So I'm not using usually I use the Stampin' Up pop dots. I'm using the other brand. I I just get it at Michaels. I don't know what it's called. Um, the pop dots that are thick. And now I'm just masking off my main cluster of photo and title and I'm going to pick out some uh, Mr. Hueys. I'm using Cameo and um, what is it called? Seafoam and Silver. And I'm being fairly generous with my sprinkles today. I came back from vacation and I'm just wanting to splatter stuff. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in my scrap room. So I'm going to add a couple of enamel dots up to this cluster right here and then um, that might be it. I'm going to show you the close-ups. Uh, I haven't done the journaling at this point so what I did with the journaling was I just followed the chevrons. You'll see it in the pictures at the end. I um, just forgot to do the journaling before I showed you this. So here you get to see how those label stickers came together. They're all from the same sticker sheet. Um, and there's that stamped date on the that came from the same set of stickers from crepe paper and I just added some stitching to it. Uh, you'll notice that this layout this layout is um, fairly simple and I kept it simple um, on purpose with minimal embellishing. It's basically just um, a picture, a title, and some brads. Um, I kept it simple because the background is fairly um, elaborate with lots of texture and um, whenever I have an elaborate background I always like to um, be fairly simple with my foreground just so that your eye can take it all in and really appreciate the details. Um, so here in the, in the still photos you can see that my journaling just follows the chevrons um, and you can check out the still photos in my Flickr gallery if you want to see what I have written there um, and also there should be a link to my blog in the information section and I always from now on I'm always putting a link to my Flickr gallery and a link to my blog with every video so that they should be easy for people to find. So thanks so much for watching everybody and have a great scrappy week.